A report by the influential policy exchange think tank has called on MI5 to reinstate counter-subversion operations in a bid to tackle the growing threat from Tehran. A day after the drone and missile attack by Iran against Israel, the policy exchange think tank has produced an 87-page report that blames the Iranian regime's outlets in the UK for stoking up protests in this country. The report has called on MI5 to reinstate counter-subversion operations in a bid to tackle the growing threat from Tehran. And I think what they mean by the counter-subversion operations is a reference to Operation Foot during the Cold War in 1971, um, when Edward Heath was the uh, Prime Minister. Operation Foot led to the expulsion of 105 Soviet officials from Great Britain. It was, in fact, a response to the um, general Soviet plan to advance terrorist activities and uh, influence peddling in, in the West. The operation made Britain a hard espionage target for the Soviets, and the report is recommending a similar response to the Iranian uh, agents, in other words, the expulsions and not issuing visas to them. The report is actually an amalgamation of most of Iran's network in the UK. Not all of it, still has missed out some of it, but it's got most of Iran's network and operations in, in, in one report. So uh, it provides a good summary of how in the last 20 years, Iran's various outlets have spread their influence in the UK and infiltrated the uh, British uh, institutions. Sort of things that I and others like me have been saying for years, but have been ignored. It's 87 pages long. I spent a few hours yesterday reading it, and I recommend reading it to anyone who's concerned about the defense of the realm. For this video, I've chosen a few interesting facts and snippets because I have little time today, but might do more interesting uh, extracts uh, from the report in the uh, coming days. So starting with some interesting figures, in total the UK government has issued 100 visas to Iranian religious figures since 2005. 21 were to ministers of religion, 79 were religious workers visas, and a total of 8 Iranian ministers of religion have been given settlement visas. I'm actually investigating who these 8 are that have um, obtained settlement visas. I expect one of them is Ayatollah Araki, the first head of the Islamic Centre in Maidenville, who's now a member of Iran's powerful assembly of experts. The assembly can actually decide the next supreme leader of Iran. During the last uprising in Iran, Ayatollah Araki stated that he can't call protesters people. Can you imagine if he has UK citizenship, someone like that? I'm pretty sure he has because his family members live in here and he's frequently visits in the UK himself, so he can't be getting a visitor's visas every time uh, like this. I mean, what is the UK government doing giving settlement visas to preachers who are propagating Khomeini's version of political Islam and are absolutely loyal to Iran's supreme leader? Are, 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 they, are the UK officials mad? Are they stupid? Or have they been bribed? The security services need to investigate this. The report also investigates how much Iran has penetrated into the Scottish politics and especially within the um, Scottish National Party. This is something that I've read about before too. One of which was uh, published in the American Spectator, um, you see here, and also in the Middle East Forum. Um, you see in this picture Nicola Sturgeon, the former leader of the SNP and the first minister of Scotland at the time, um, sitting at the same dinner table with Ayatollah Shomali. Ayatollah Shamali is the former head of the Islamic Centre and another one of um, Iran's Supreme Leader's uh, representatives in the UK. What I learned from the policy exchange report, however, is the identity of this UK military figure sitting at another event next to Ayatollah Shamali. The man in the military uniform is Major General Bob Bruce, military secretary and general officer. In other words, the head of the British Army in Scotland in 2017. And there he is having a nice lunch sitting next to the Supreme Leader of Iran's representative in Scotland. What a farce. What on earth is a high-ranking UK military man doing sitting next to the representative of the Supreme Leader of a hostile country who encourages his followers to chant death to England every Friday? Do you know, when I see these things like this so many times, I just want to give up. I'm, I'm, I'm too old now. I, I should be spending time with my loved ones, doing the things that I love. But... 
every time I'm on the verge of giving up, I say to myself, this country has been so good to me. This is where my children are born and will live. I must not let what happened in Iran happen here. Anyway, I'm not sure how much difference I'm making. Um, I suppose anything is better than nothing. But I must dash, I will have more from the policy exchange report in my next videos maybe.